The media have a new angle. Did Ivanka Trump influence her father's decision to launch cruise missiles against Syria? This isn't some made-up rumor. It's Eric Trump, another one of the president's kids, who suggested this in an interview with the Daily Telegraph, saying that Ivanka did uh, play a role and that she was heartbroken and outraged by the pictures of the babies and other victims of Assad's chemical attack. But let's not get carried away here. Who wasn't heartbroken and outraged by those grisly images? And the president himself talked about how what an emotional impact it had on him. Now, if his daughter added her voice to those he was talking to in trying to decide what would be an appropriate response to Syria crossing this red line, I have no problem with that. And But, you know, it gives a, a hook for the press to, I think, those who think that Dar- Donald Trump doesn't have a lot of foreign policy acumen, like to say, oh, he's influenced by Steve Bannon. Oh, Ivanka's really running things. No, it's really Jared. You know, while all those people may have voices, when you become the president, and this uh, helps explain why the action that Donald Trump took was contrary to what he had suggested that President Obama not do, what he suggested that President Obama do by refraining from attacking Syria back in 2013. But there's a larger backdrop to all this, and it has to do with Russia. In fact, Eric Trump brought this up in his interview with the London paper, saying, uh, you know, that his his father would be tough with Russia, uh, that he was not going to back down against Russia. Part of what has been going on with all of these congressional investigations and other inquiries into whatever ties, improper or otherwise, may have existed between candidate Trump, Trump aides or associates, and Moscow, uh, has been this notion that because Donald Trump during the campaign uh, basically said favorable things about Vladimir Putin and basically talked about uh, how he would like, if possible, to get along with Russia, he could see Russia as a potential ally, this just was stunning and shocking to the Washington foreign policy establishment, which wants hostile relations uh, with the Kremlin. And when you layer onto that the revelations about the Kremlin, obviously uh, using hackers to try to defeat Hillary Clinton, not saying that's tipped the outcome of the election by any means, but there's no question that the hacked emails at the DNC and the Hillary campaign were not helpful to her candidacy. So when you stir all that into a big pot, what you get is suspicion, including by some journalists and particularly commentators on the left, uh, that there was either some kind of unspoken deal or agreement between Trump and Russia to explain his um, uh, friendlier or more neutral stance toward Moscow or, you know, this conspiracy theory that the Russians have something on Trump and all that. So he gets into office and what does he do? He not only is in a much more rocky position, um, a rocky relationship with Russia right now, his secretary of state using some harsh language, his U.N. ambassador Nikki Haley using some harsh language against Russia, but he attacks uh, or launches the missile attack against that Syrian airfield where the Russians had been based. They got word to evacuate so that nobody was killed. Um, and now, uh, you know, it's sort of welcome to the real world of geopolitics. So whatever, you know, like anything else, a presidential candidate may have positions on A, B, C, D, and E. When you get into office, when you're the commander in chief, you look at things differently. So all these conspiracy theories about some kind of questionable link between Trump and Russia, I think are starting to melt in the real harsh daylight of how this president is conducting himself against Syria and its big patron, the Russian government.